The world's population is growing and urbanizing so fast that we will need to build over the next 20 years as many houses as we have built in the past 2,000 years. To overcome this challenge, a variety of innovative solutions are being proposed. Most of them on Earth, but some may be on Mars. Colonizing space is the next great leap for humankind. Of all the planets in our solar system, Mars is the most similar to Earth and considered the best option for human colonization. Availability of materials and energy makes it possible to construct a permanent habitat, a first step toward a human settlement. But before talking about living on Mars, let me tell you about my life on Earth. I grew up in a small village near Lisbon, in Portugal. While growing up, it became clear that some people still struggled with poverty and lacked proper housing. Perceiving this reality instilled in me the desire to change it. I also loved playing with Legos. Thus, being an architect was something I desired since a very young age. When I was 10 years old, the country changed from dictatorship to democracy. For a period, things were a bit utopian. For instance, students had an input regarding how schools were run. This participatory exercise often led to more effective and inclusive outcomes, something that has inspired my approach until today. When I was 15 years old, my family moved to a small town. In high school, a great science teacher inspired me to be a scientist. I chose architecture because its human side was more appealing. But my approach is very influenced by science. I went to college in Lisbon, but one year I decided to commute from home. In this daily journey, I crossed a variety of landscapes. When the countryside started to fade, there was illegal housing, which looked chaotic. In the outskirts, governmental housing was predominant and dull. However, the city center where the School of Architecture was located was diverse and beautiful. This life experience prompted me to think of ways to provide for mass customized affordable housing and create environments with the qualities we value in historical neighborhoods. My undergraduate thesis proposed the use of computer control design and production systems to achieve this goal. The thesis was published as a book by the National Laboratory of Civil Engineering, where I worked after graduation. The quest for knowledge to materialize this vision led me to MIT, where I met inspiring researchers who eventually became my advisors. My master thesis was focused on understanding people's perception of order and diversity. The PG thesis addressed the development of a design system that allowed users to create their own houses in the style of an award-winning architect who could not distinguish the output designs from his own. The following years were dedicated to teaching future architects how to develop their own design systems. Then the focus gradually shifted to the production system. Two paradigms were identified. The first considered the fabrication of standard components that could be combined in different ways to make up different houses the legal approach. The second paradigm was the 3D printing of houses at full scale. In 3D printing, objects are made by extruding through a nozzle, a material that hardens when deposited, thereby creating the object layer by layer. The process includes generating the form of the object in the computer, then slicing it to obtain the pass followed by the nozzle during extrusion, then generating the instructions to control the machine holding the nozzle and then printing. By moving to Penn State five years ago, I found the means required to fully explore 3D printing. Penn State has a strong culture of multidisciplinary collaboration and financial resources. I teamed up with colleagues from various scientific fields and together we participated in the NASA 3D printed Mars Habitat Challenge. The goal was to develop the technology to print shelters on Mars using local resources, but eyeing its future application on Earth. The challenge had two parallel workflows. One was a virtual construction of a shelter on Mars, and the other was the actual printing on Earth. 
Conditions on Mars are inhospitable and pose big challenge to human life. The expense and limitation of space travel make it necessary to use indigenous materials and resources. Our strategy followed our research to develop low-cost housing on Earth using parametric design and 3D printing. The construction process involved a robotic arm printing a gel polymer concrete mixture called Marscrete, which is made of materials found on the red planet. This strategy required modeling the relations between three different but related subsystems concerning materials, printing system, and design. We characterize the material behavior by checking its printability and its shape deformation during the printing process. Results were then considered in the design of the toolpath, compensating for material deformation. We also studied the affordances of the printing process in terms of printable forms and structure. An additional concern was the creation of a statically pleasing surfaces. Another aspect was the development of seamless, graded transition between different materials, such as concrete and glass or cork, which could be recycled from spaceships. These materials allow to optimize the structural, thermal, and optical performance of the habitat, while decreasing the use of material and energy resources. The design of the shelter was based on constraints derived from our study of materials behavior and the printing system. These constraints were encoded into a parametric design system that allowed to explore different design configurations and identify optimal ones, which were then fed into a construction simulator. Among multiple options, we chose one to illustrate our concept. The shelter is composed of modular units. Each unit consists of a protective shell made from Marscrete and a lighter interior built from recycled plastics. We manipulated the seamless transition from concrete to glass and to cork. The glass gradient increases towards the top to provide for ambient light. The cork gradient increases towards the exterior to create a protective layer and shield the habitat from cosmic radiation and low temperatures. There are four units for work, living, sleeping, and gardening. Entry chambers on each end of the habitat enable access from the exterior and emergency exits. The first unit includes a wet lab on the first floor and the individual workspaces on the second floor. The second unit hosts the dining area, kitchen and bathrooms on the first floor and the leisure area on the second floor. The third unit includes the sleeping quarters on the first floor and a workout area on the second floor. The design was conceived to enable visual communication between the various units and floors, offering a spatially rich living environment. The fourth unit contains life support and hydroponic systems that produce food and oxygen. Each unit can be sealed and will have life support capability during repairs. The printing system is mounted on a rover. It includes silos where different process materials are stored. For instance, concrete mixtures with sand, cork or glass as aggregates. Each of these silos is connected through a conveyor to a dual mixer and pump. Each pump mixes the concrete with water and then extrudes it. By changing the relative speed of these pumps, it's possible to obtain concretes with different gradients. These are extruded to a hose connected to a nozzle mounted on a robotic arm. A retractable dome guarantees a sealed and controlled environment with proper conditions for printing. Once at the desired location, the robot levels the ground and digs a trench. Then the dome is closed and printing begins. First, the foundation footing, then the ground slab, then the walls. Penetrating frames are placed where required as walls are printed. When reaching the proper level, the robot constructs the floors, then it prints the inclined walls, forming the roof and closing the habitat. Once one module is constructed, the rover moves to print the next module, and so on, until the whole habitat is built. Then the habitat is sealed by enclosing the ports and placing connectors between units. These connectors can also seal units in the event of an emergency. Stairs, rails, and furniture are then printed using small printers, and the installations are mounted. 
the habitat is then ready to inhabit. Supported by 3D printing technology and advances in material science, our multidisciplinary approach explores various interrelated topics that inform and transform design and construction processes and the language of architecture. The same parametric design system used to generate optimized designs for MERS was also used for Earth because of the differences in the environmental conditions. The generated designs are different in the two scenarios. The construction simulator allowed us to design the printing setting with rigor, demonstrate its feasibility, and qualify for the finals of the challenge. At the competition, we built, for the first time ever, a fully enclosed 3D printing structure at construction scale without any support structure. Achievements like this can be accomplished only in a research environment where teamwork elevates individual efforts, where researchers from various backgrounds and disciplines, united around the common goal, collaborate to develop the science, the technology, and the design required to succeed. Innovative design and construction technologies developed to overcome the shortage of housing on Earth were used to design a habitat to support the human exploration of Mars. But the lessons learned from this effort can impact the way we design and build on Earth. According to the United Nations, 900 million people worldwide lived in slums in 2018, a number that is expected to double by 2025. 3D printing technology will allow us to build more affordable homes in a short time, helping to overcome homelessness. The houses will be customized to meet the needs of their users, but also adapted to their environment, reducing the use of energy and material resources. And these will be sourced locally, further reducing the impact on the environment. But not only houses, we can even build bridges or playgrounds and our infrastructure as needed. In short, this technology will allow us to build better, quicker, cheaper, and more sustainably, help preserve our planet, and enable an equal future for all. Thank you.